It is just a little past 4.30, so we will call this session of the Jackson County Board of Education into order. And as our custom, we are going to take the first part to, uh, to reflect and to pray for the things that are going on in our uh, county with our system. So if you'll bow with me, please. Thank you. The first thing we we have is that, that we uh, approve the agenda. Mr. West has, has asked to uh, add an item before general business, and and we're going to call it uh, some policy clarification. So he has some policy questions, and we're going to do that before we move into uh, the general business of bank reconciliation. So. We do have that added to our agenda. And uh, the question that we have, if, if uh, Mr. Dukes will let him address those, and then, and then we'll move on into our, to our business. Outside of that one addition, is there anything else that needs to be added to the agenda? Okay. Hearing none, then we're going to consider a motion to approve the agenda with this one added item uh, in its entirety. So, do we have a motion? <coughs> I'll make that motion. Mr. West makes a motion. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Gant seconds that. Um, all in favor say aye. Uh -huh. Aye. Any opposed? So, the agenda has been approved. So, uh, we will move to that added item mr west so all right can. first question i got on on this agenda we get we're dealing with uh north jackson middle school and my first question i don't know if this is to clara the superintendent but does the board need to vote on that situation before we approve and that that is not a board item as far as the them not declaring a sport at bridgeport not <coughs> declaring a sport at stevenson by having the team at North Jackson. But we had, when we have uh, bowling and all that, we had to prove each one of those sports. You approved the supplements, you didn't approve the sports. They declared the sports, but, but, what, but what the board approves is the supplements on those. Okay, so you're saying the board don't approve the? Not, not the different sports that they play. Is that right, Claire? Okay. So the supplement is it was was actually taken off of this this uh, agenda. Yes, for that reason. Okay, another question I've got on here: We are naming a gym at Pisgah after the coach out there. Does the board have a policy concerning naming sporting facilities? Currently, there is no policy. It's been done different ways throughout the years. And, and, and there has been no consistency, per se, to it. Don't you think we need a policy to... We can, we can look at a policy with, with the new manual that's coming out. There, there was an option for the building of names. Of course, I didn't like the one that it had. It said two years after they've passed away, I think, something like that. I think people should get to enjoy it while they're still alive, you know? So, but we can look at adding some type of policy to the future for the future okay another question I had and I think this is pertaining to board policy it's come to my attention that uh, in May 26 2016 the board voted to go to 10 month contract for all tech school instructors and it's come to my attention that we've got some hard now is nine month contract and that is correct and, and at, at that point you made those all 10 month contract and after the fact our financials we went in the red and so we backed them off to nine month is that not something the board would have to vote on well no I since mean, we, we voted on when, that when it was the posted beginning? you voted on the contracts for those teachers to go 10 months 
but when we reposted these positions, we reposted them as either nine or ten month position. I we went back and nine. looked at the postings on them, and it don't say nine or ten month. And I would thank the board. We voted on that. We from now on we had an extended work session about this, and I'm pretty sure you was at the work session. Mr. Wright had an argument about why we was giving them a ten month contract, and I think the tech schools are center of a uh, county and center of attention here and we need to get quality instructors there and that's what Mr. Wright wanted it to go 10 month contract and I think that's what the board intended on doing and we voted on that and I think the board would have to vote to change that. Clara? Or Sheila, either one of y'all, either one of y'all got any clarification on that? I don't remember the board and what you voted on. If you just voted on one, the ones that were there now, when you <coughs> posted, that doesn't mean that that, that were 10 months. Claire, am I not right in that? Okay. It would be the posting that would change that. Unless you voted that all employees at that facility would be 10 months. And I, I don't, I'd have to go back and look at my notes to see what you voted on. Did you do that? That was the intent of the board. Yeah, but I don't think that was ever ever stated. I I was under the impression that those new employees were hired as nine month employees. If what did you if what, if what you voted on was the current employees, then it would just cover them. Mm -hmm. And then the posting would cover any new employees. Unless you said all employees and future employees. I, I don't think that's been too long ago for me to remember. Now, Mr. Gent, we talked about yeah. this, and we that was our intent, right? Correct. Mr. Story, you was in on that. The intent was to go 10-month contract. I thought that was what was doing. So that we could get better employees at the tech school, compete with industry a little bit, and get better employees. And we've already lost several employees up there, as it is, because they're not making enough money. They can make more money in the industry. And we need quality teachers at Tech School. I agree with that. I agree with that completely. But but the ones you've lost were after that meeting where you made everybody 10 months. So those all left after that fact. Yeah, it wouldn't have made good sense for us to move the ones that are up to 10 months if we wasn't intending on everybody from here on out getting a 10 month contract. Well, that was our intent, right, Mr. Yeah, that was our intent. Intent. And I think that we should honor what, what the board intended May the 26th. We had a work session on May the 18th and talked about that. If anybody kept notes, should be in those notes. That would have been prior administration. I was Principal Skyline still during that time. You was, was, I'm, I'm pretty sure you was here I'm at that board sure meeting. I'm pretty sure I was at the meeting, but I didn't keep notes. I listened. I didn't have input at that time. So right now they are they are working on, some of those employees are working on a nine-month contract. Now whether they need to be a 10-month contract. And the only ones that, were, that are on nine-month have been hired in this school year. Two. That was Sarah Burdett's choice to stay at nine months because she wanted the time off. Do what now? Yeah, she was an was exception. That, do what now? She was an exception. Yes. Yes. And at that time, that was wrote into the, the minutes, I know, that she wanted to stay at nine months. But now that was the intent of the board at that time, and we voted on it. Now what what they what whoever was secretary wrote down, I can't say what they wrote down, but that was the intent of the board, and we should honor what the board wanted, and that's to give those people to take school a ten month contract. Mr. Stevens, that might be something that you want to get back and, and look in those notes and touch base with Mr. Porter on. So. If you'll do that, that that may help. And and two, moving forward, you know, it may be that 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 we have to advertise those jobs as ten month 
you know, specify if that be the case. And, uh, you know, because it, it is getting harder and harder to, to, to find those skilled trade instructors. It's getting harder to find a math teacher and a special Absolutely. ed teacher and a science teacher as well. You better believe it. And it's going to be come a time where, and they're already at a premium. I mean, we have folks that are, that are leaving, uh, leaving the education profession to, to look for engineering jobs and uh, jobs in labs. So it's it's highly competitive to keep those people in and so at, at the time we was talking about that we talked about that the uh, tech school people has things they have to do in the summer and that was part of their 10 month contract let a lot of them go to the nationals some of them go to something or they all supposed to go to summer conference and they stopped doing that because they wouldn't get paid for it because mr uh Harden had moved them back to a nine-month contract. All of them he hired, he hired them in as a nine-month contract on his own. That's the reason we changed it as a board. We gave them that ten-month contract to get them up where they could compete with the industry and we could get good instructors up there. Now, I understand that, that same thing goes for English teachers and history and all that, but they don't work in the summertime. They're they, off. They they're off. They do development things, too. I mean, there's... We got a lot of folks in our system puts in extra hours during the system, during the summer. I mean, I would say it's fair to say that there's not a school in our system that does not put in hours during the summer, days, some of them weeks during the summer. Workshops on their own, professional development, whatever. And they're not on 10-month contracts. Okay. They understand that when they go in, but we had the understanding we was going to hire them all as 10-month contracts. And I know we got three board members here that remembers that. Now, Mr. I remember it. Mr. Gantz, you remember doing that? Yes, sir. What about you, Mr. Yeah. And then, Mr. So you got three right there. And Chad, you was involved in on it too. I, was, I don't think I've missed a meeting since I've been here. I'm pretty well attended on these board meetings. But I did know that, that the individuals that, that were presented to us were nine month employees. No, I've looked at the agenda and they're not either. Well, I, I, it was I not was on the agenda that. that they were nine or ten months. It was on the posting that you looked at when you looked at the package. That they were nine or ten months. Nine, four, ten. So the, the employees that was hard in understands that they were on a nine month contract. Okay. Because I know better than that. Yeah. Well, Mr. Dukes, you can, if you don't care to look back on that, we we'll speak back. Mr. Porter and see what we look back. If there's something that we need to do for that situation, we can do that then. Okay, I've got one more while we're talking about it. All right, what is the policy for visitors on our campuses? What's board policy? Can anybody tell me what board policy is for visitors on campus? Just at each school? At each school, yes. Everybody should check in the front office. Okay, what, 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 what's your exact question you mean there? What is, the, what is the board policy for visitors at a local school? And we can find that out in one second. I don't know the exact, Five I know points, that everybody... You want me to read it to you? Read it to you. 5.71, school visitors. <clears throat> it shall be the policy of the Jackson County Board of Education that all visitors in any school building or any part of the school campus must report directly to the school office for written permission to visit said campus. A visitor is any person who is not a student, employee, or local official of the school. My question is, is board members local officials? Right now member. you're a local official, but when okay. that gavel's hit at 5.30, you're no longer a local official. Do what now? You're a local official during the board meeting. When the board meeting's over, you're an individual citizen at that time. Clara, I'm looking at you. I mean, during, during business, you're conducting business, you're a local official, but when you're not conducting business, you're a citizen of the county. So you're saying when board members go to, they have to check in as a visitor, is that right? Absolutely. I, I never thought that was a rule. I thought if we wore 
our tags like the gentleman here has on, and you go to the principal's office, then while you're talking to him, you're not a VISTA, you're a board member because you're wearing identification that you are a board member. That's what I'm wanting to clear this up now. I can't answer that. That's the first time I've ever asked that I've, question. I've never been asked. And I've visited every school yeah. in the county at least 20 times in my life. And I would say, I want clarification from Mr. Porter on this. But I would say when you go to the school as a function, when you're invited and you report through the front office, that's one thing. I think when you're walking through the back door and questioning people, I think that's a completely different situation. Nobody should be walking through the back door. Doesn't matter who they are. Doesn't matter who they are. Yeah. But we've had that this year. Yeah, I always went by the principal's office first. Yeah, well, well, we I don't think you cease being a board member just when you leave this meeting. I don't either. I think you're a board member. Any time, any function you have in the county, you know the board has two or three responsibilities. One is campuses, buildings. We're, we're supposed to be over all the buildings and campuses in Jackson County. And uh, when someone asked you to leave a campus and you're over that campus, that's not right. I, I never have had that situation happen. But I, I, I believe it says somewhere in the handbook that the board members are responsible for the, camp, the school campuses and grounds. That's why we have to get an input on all land sold and bought by the Jackson County Board of Education. And we'll get a lot of these questions answered at our whole board training coming up because it is dealing with roles and responsibilities. And I think if you're there visiting campus on a board business, then it's different than if you're there just doing your own thing. Yeah. Or if you're walking the halls, that's walking the halls. It really all depends on what your business purpose is. You know, you could be going to school with your grandson, isn't eating lunch. You're not really there as a board member. And if you go to the school and say, hey, I'm here just looking for what they won't tell me about, you're not being positive for the school system and you need to talk to me before you enter that school. Well, most principals don't see it that way. Most principals invite all board members to come in and look around. I, I've not been to a school yet where the principal didn't go out of their way to make you welcome. I know that to be untrue as well. They may tell you one thing and tell us a different one. That may, that may be it. Yeah, so. so I guess we need to look at that principle if they're doing that then. If, if there's clarification that's being be garnered for that particular question, Mr. Deeks, I'm going to have you again. So you're saying when we come to the central office or any school facility, we need to check in as a visitor? Everybody that comes through this central office needs to come through that front door unless you've got a key to one of these side doors. Doesn't matter who it is. Same thing with the school. When we go to school, when I go to section school, I don't walk in the back door. I walk straight to the office. It's the first place I go. And I let them know what I'm doing there. Same thing at North Jackson, same thing at Dutton. That's the first place I report to and let them know my well, business. Well, that's not what board policy says. It says a visitor is any person who is not a student employee or local official of the school. That's what board policy said. Check the school governance act. I can tell you what school governance act says. They don't like elected superintendents. <laughs> they want all appointed superintendents and they assume that everybody's got appointed superintendent. I think they I think they, they know who all's got appointed superintendents. I know, but they want everybody to have and appointed superintendent and they may they may get that at one at some time but that's neither here nor there so and, unless there's a, another question that you have outside of getting that clarification whether you are a, uh, a local education official then we're going to move on okay all right i got one more before okay. we go board policy says that we're supposed to get the agenda 48 hours before the board meeting 
We've got three board members here today did not get that agenda 48 hours ago. They were emailed on Friday afternoon. Now they were updated today, but you can look back my entire, they have been 48 hours in advance via email. That's how y'all chose to get them, was tech, through technology prior to my becoming superintendent. It's different from Dropbox to email, but it is email and it was 48 hours in advance. And, and I, we've got, what do we've you got consider, Brad here and he can, he can prove that for us. What do you consider 48 hours? What time did you send it out this? this three. Friday afternoon at 3.30 and then having a board meeting Monday afternoon is not 24 hours. Yeah, but not during school time. Didn't say. It just There's no clarification on that on, on board policy either. I mean, that's that's one of those I guess gray areas. I don't know. It well, just says 48 hours. Shed. The office Mr. is not Gordon, open. Please. You can't come in. You're supposed to give 48 hours notice so people's got questions. They can come in and ask those questions before the board meeting, like we're doing right now. Yeah. All right. You can't come in during the weekend because office is closed. Now, I don't have to explain that to you. Well, no, you but, know it says, but it says 48 hours, so it's, he's given 48 hours, and 48 hours is 48 hours. Whether it's it's the best 48 hours is could be in question, but it's 48 hours says 48 hours. Well, board pop. We got to start following board pops. We can't expect our oh, teachers. I agree. We I can't agree. expect the students, teachers, and everybody else to follow board policy if the superintendent. <laughs> And the board members are not going to follow board policy. We will follow board policy. We need to follow board policy. We've been complaining about this for about 15 months now. Not getting the agenda on time, not having the packages ready on time. Every month nearly we mention it. They've got it recorded. I mentioned it several times myself. That we're not getting it on you time. You can look back at every email. I can have Brad bring it up right now. You have gotten every email, every agenda, 48 hours prior to the board meeting. There was one situation we had back prior to Christmas, a special call meeting, that for a disciplinary action. That's the only one that was not 48 hours in advance in my 15 months. Not this meeting. The last meeting you give it to us 48 hours before the meeting. <clears throat> The special call meeting? No. I can't remember what the special call meeting was about, but I'm sure no. we did, yes. When we hired the teacher that didn't have a teaching certificate? No, what I can pull have every bit of, they can have every bit of this data pulled in about five minutes. Pull, I mean, that's we'll, good. We'll get it we'll get it. Okay. We'll get it. So Wait, so Mr. Gant, say, did you get the agenda this time? Forty eight no, hours. Mr. Story, did you get it? I didn't get an agenda at all. Did you get one, Mr. Gant? No. What got me in trouble to start with was emailing the agenda to board members. Because they was not getting the agenda theirself, and I was emailing it to them. And now I don't email it to them, so they don't get it. We've got documentation where it goes to their email. We've got documentation where it goes to all five of y'all's school email. Did you send it on a fax machine? I did not send it to you on a fax machine. I'm sorry, that's my fault. Okay. Uh, we don't have a... We don't have a way of getting email besides the fax machine. The fax machines the only access that I have to getting the agenda. But that that's that's all right. If something comes up next time, just call me and read it, that's all. I'm I'm not fussing about this one. But uh, I went to, before I came I, I went by the post office, made sure it wasn't mailed. Okay. Mr. Arnold, will you make sure those, those emails are getting out? Thank you. We're going to move to general business. Under A, a motion to approve the bank reconciliations for February 2018. For the months of February 2018, the total payroll expenditures 
or three million six hundred fifty four thousand seven hundred thirty seven dollars and fifty six cents and non and total non payroll expenditures were eight hundred nine thousand seven hundred two dollars and fifty seven cents so do we have a motion to approve those bank reconciliations I'll make a motion we approve the bank reconciliation store makes that motion is there a second Second. Yes, seconds that. Is there any discussion? Yes, this is one thing I I don't I don't talk to Mr. Middleton about it. We didn't get this forty eight hours, but I understand his situation. He had a new one in the family. I understand his situation I, on I'm doing good today here <laughs> I understand. I understand. That one. All right. So uh we've had Mr. West had to comment about that, so we will move to a vote. And, uh, Mr. West? Yes. Mr. Story? Yes. Mr. Dr. Guess? Yes. Mr. Gant? Yes. Myself is a yes. And those bank reconciliations have been approved. Consider motion for any corrections, additions, or deletions to the February 21st, 18, and February 28th, 18 board meeting minutes. Hearing no corrections, we'll move for a motion to approve those. I'll make a motion we approve item B. Mr. Storm makes a motion or a second. I'll second that. Any discussion? We'll move to vote. Mr. West? Yes. Mr. Story? Yes. Dr. Guest? Yes. Mr. Gant? Yes. Myself is a yes. That motion carries. Uh, mm -hmm. Consider a motion to approve the updated maintenance transportation salary schedule, and this has been laying uh, from our previous regular meeting. I'll make that motion. Is there a second? Second. Uh, Mr. Gant seconds that. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, then we'll move to vote. Mr. West? Yes. Mr. Story? Yes. Dr. Guest? Yes. Mr. Gant? Yes. Myself? Yes, that motion carries. Uh, <coughs> D, we have to consider a motion to name the new Pisgah High School Gymnasium after uh, Carrie Ellison. I name mm -hmm. it the Carrie Ellison Gymnasium. I'll make that motion. Mr. Story makes a motion. Is there a second? Second. Dr. Guest seconds that. Is there any discussion? Uh, I have a concern. Uh, I don't oppose uh, what is stated in the motion, but I do think we need to be consistent. Uh, if you know, I know in times past, for example, at Bryant, when that gymnasium was named after Coach Slider, uh, I don't know how many signatures they had. In fact, I don't know that there is a policy stating that you have to have so many signatures. But I just think we need to be consistent. He had 250 signatures, I know. That, that Mr. Did. And I don't know if they were requested to get those or if they just produced them. You know, I don't. Well, I think that. they thought they had to get them. Yeah. I remember Glenn Jackson, you know, was the chairman of that committee, and he spent a lot of time getting signatures and a specified number out of them. <clears throat> it's been done three or four times, and then I know four or five times it hadn't been, so we're not consistent on that. I don't know if we should be or have a rule on the consistency. That was one of my questions about board policy. I think we need a board policy on that. There may be a state statute, and I, I did not look at it, so if you want to pass it, I would do so conditionally. One is not violating state statute regarding naming of public buildings. Okay. There's a new state statute regarding that. I don't know if it applies to gymnasiums or not, so that's all. I Why don't just we just set that aside, Mr. President, until we get that? Well, we've already dedicated the gym, the gym and had the meeting. Right. I don't think we need to. But we could do set that aside. Con conditionally. You think would be okay for that, Mr. Yeah. Okay. And then if there's something that, that comes up like that, then we can come back and rescind that and make yeah. sure we have whatever we need to do there. My recollection of the statute is you have to have 
the approval of some committee that the state has set up about naming public buildings, but I don't think it'll be a problem with that. And maybe another step that you have to go through to get this done. Come on. Okay. All right, then, then we, upon Mr. Porter's recommendation, uh, we do have a motion and a second, and, and we appreciate the question and the clarification. So we can proceed, and if we look, looks like we've done something out of order, then we can come back and we can rescind this. So we, we do have a motion and a second, so we will proceed to vote then. Mr. West? Yes. Mr. Story? Yes. Dr. Yes? Yes. Mr. Gant? Yes. Myself is a yes, and that motion carries. Consider a motion to approve the overnight trip for North Jackson Beta Club to attend the state beta convention in Birmingham from April the 4th uh, through April the 6th. I make that motion. Story makes a motion. Is there a second? Second. Dr. Yes, second. So is there any discussion? We'll move to vote. Mr. West? Yes. Uh, Mr. Story? Yes. Dr. Guess? Yes. Mr. Gant? Yes. And myself is yes. That motion carries. F, we have uh, the discussion of the rescue squad building, and, and Mr. Porter had, had made mention uh, before that there, there may be some, uh, some, some items that need to be addressed with that. Mr. Porter, will you touch on that, please? Sure. The, in my recollection is that the, the offer was to purchase the building for $50,000, um, and that, that is a, it's sort of strange the way it comes up, but that, that's the bid amount. You've got to bid it out for anything that you're going to buy. Fifty thousand dollars or more, if it's if it's a public works contract, then this would be that. But if the contract, if the offer is less than fifty, then you don't have to go through a bid process. The board would still have to approve it, uh, but it just needs to be less than fifty thousand uh, dollars to avoid any problem with the bid law. Okay. So if that price were to be negotiated lower, then then it was yeah. it would make it, that process much more simple, yeah. correct? The, and, and the, uh, the folks from the rescue squad, they, uh, they met with us, gosh, a month ago, or so it seems like. At a work session. Yeah, at a work session, and, and uh, gave us specifics on that, on that building, and the appraisal value of that building, it's, it's quite a bit more than 50,000, so. But, was there anything else, Mr. Porter, that, that went along with that, as far as it being, a movable structure. Uh, my, my understanding it is a building. I haven't looked at it, but my understanding is a building that's attached to the ground. It's on the ground. It's a regular building, which makes part of the property. Once you do that, once you permanently affix it, it becomes part of the real estate. So I mean, they built it. They spent the money to build it. So I don't think it's a problem with the board reimbursing them for that. Um, so I just want to make sure it was not a portable building. So right. That's, and that's what I'm saying is not. So. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Porter. Is there any other questions on that? So we're not taking any action on that. It was just mainly for clarification. So we we wanted to we we took that off of the agenda. I think Mr. Dukes took it off until we could have those that addressed. Okay. So, and I think that building is on a it's on a slab, right, Mr. Uh, Yes, Kirby. Okay. So it would make it permanent structure. We didn't, you know, if it were portable and they could take it with them, then then that, that might have been a different issue. So now it is a building on our property. So uh, but do appreciate the clarification on, on the 50000 to below 50000 Okay. Uh, any other questions, Mr. Smith? Other questions? No, sir. Dr. Guess? No. Mr. West? No. Story all good? Good. Okay. Uh, Mr. Dukes, and that you can proceed with that, I would think, and put for the next agenda, maybe. Uh, G, recognition of all CMP managers with a perfect health rating. And it's always good to go in there and see those uh, 100s. And I know Dr. Dutton is, is, uh, is proud of, of, of her area that she supervises. And, and Mr. Dukes, you may have something else to say about that before we recognize these individuals. That's great work. It's always Good to see it, and, and Dr. Dutton does a great job with the CMP website and Facebook page, and um, she lets us know when these people do that. And again, y'all, y'all heard me say it, y'all heard others say it. Y'all may be the only warm meal some of these folks get, and we appreciate you taking the time and effort 
to keep it clean, to, to, try, to strive for perfection in the lunchroom. That means a lot, it really does. Dr. Dutton, would you introduce these ladies and let them come up here and get their picture made with us? <coughs> Under personnel actions for leaves, we have consider a motion to approve a family medical leave um, for Andrea Collin effective February the 8th through March the 23rd. I make a motion we approve that. Mr. Storm makes a motion. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Gantz seconds. Is there any discussion? Any number moved vote, Mr. <coughs> West? Yes. Mr. Story? Yes. Dr. Guest? Yes. Mr. Gantz? Yes. Myself is yes, that motion carries. Consider a motion to approve Family Medical Leave Act for Stephanie Johnson, effective March the 19th through May the 25th. I'll make that motion. Second. Uh, yes, second. So that is there any discussion? We'll move to a vote then. Mr. West? Yes. Mr. Story? Yes. Dr. Guess? Yes. Mr. Gant? Yes. Myself? Yes, that motion carries. Under transfers, consider a motion to transfer Jamie Whitley from a 75% teacher at Stevenson Middle School to a 100% teacher at Stevenson Middle School, <coughs> effective March the 13th, 2018. I'll make that motion. Second. Uh, yes, it's going to second. Is there any discussion? No discussion. And we'll move to vote, Mr. West. Yes. Mr. Story. Yes. Dr. Guess. Yes. Mr. Gant. Yes. Myself is yes. That motion carries. <coughs> Under employment, consider a motion to approve Stephanie Harris as a countywide special services aide effective March 13, 2018. Is that a transfer or is that a brand new deal? That's a new hire. New hire. To replace the resignation from the last okay. meeting. And that's a countywide aid. I'll make that motion again. Same. Yes, seconds. Is there any discussion? Then we'll move to vote, Mr. West. Yes. Mr. Story. Yes. Dr. Guess. Yes. Mr. Gant. Yes. Myself. Yes. Motion carries. Under coaching assignments, consider a motion to approve Davy Arnold as a non-faculty assistant football coach at Pisgah, pending the background clearance. I'll make that motion. Second. Dr. Guess. Seconds. Is there any discussion? Uh, no discussion, but we, in addition to the background check, those individuals have to pass the, uh, the two courses through the Athletic Association. Uh, like Mr. Davis is in here, but I know that he's good about making sure they have that. So that's in addition to the background clearance. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll move to vote then. Mr. West? Yes. Mr. Story? Yes. Dr. Guest? Yes. Mr. Gant? Yes. Myself? Yes. That motion carries. <coughs> Consider a motion to approve uh, Megan Willis as a middle school cheer coach at North Jackson. 
That'll be for the the, the, the coming year. Okay. Yeah. For that uh, year. I'll yes. make that motion. Second. Story makes a motion. Dr. Guest seconds. Is there any discussion? We'll move to vote, Mr. West. Abstain. Mr. West will abstain. Mr. Story? Yes. Dr. Guest? Yes. Mr. Gant? Yes. Myself is yes. That motion carries. Uh, consider motion to approve Michael Bass as a middle school football coach at North Jackson. I'll make that motion. Second. Mr. Story makes a motion. Dr. Guest seconds. Is there any discussion? That is starting next year, right? Thank that's you. Correct. Okay. We'll have spring football coming up, so he yeah, will be a part spring, of that. But that's pretty common for them to do spring and not get paid. Okay. All right. He's already employed, so. Yeah. You're right. He right. will get paid. Right. Okay. So, we'll, uh, any other discussion? Well, we hired coaches to do that full time. When the two coaches were hired, one at Steve's and one at Bridgeport, their job carried out to the end of this season, is what I understand. It does. But I think we're, we're getting a good coach here with this young bass boy. I believe he's going to be outstanding. So what you're saying, they won't be practicing this spring. Bridgeport and Stevenson won't be practicing. The coaches that's already hired up there won't be practicing this spring. Well, no, they will be. They will be. They'll help. But he's going to be the head coach of that team this next year. Next year, so. Take part right. in spring practice. So they'll, probably, they'll do it together. But they're going to be practicing at it, North Jackson? Mm -hmm. Yes. They got facilities up there. Y'all got facilities for yes. junior high and high school both? Yes. Yes, they don't miss, you know, they'll, they'll, we have a practice field and a regular field. And uh, we have regularly good practices in the front. Yeah, we have regular practices already. Stevenson, Richport Stevenson play directly together and practice at North Jackson right now. Okay. Any other discussion or questions? And we will move. And also, uh, Michael Bass has he has passed his courses, so that's that's one we don't worry about because he coached this year basketball at North Jackson. So we'll move to vote then, Mr. West. I'm going to let the people at North Jackson vote on that. Stay. Okay. They don't have a vote on this one, but Mr. West will abstain. Mr. Story? I vote yes. Story is yes. Dr. Guess? Yes. Mr. Gant? Yes. Myself is yes. That motion carries. Next on the agenda, we have uh, an executive session. Mr. Uh, Chairman? Yes. Could I insert a motion here? Okay. Uh, for the sake of clarification, I move that uh, in the terminating the 48 hours prior to a board meeting that notice be given that we exclude holidays and weekends. So it's, you want to exclude holidays and weekends? Yes. If that is um, part of our, our yeah, policy. If that's changing the policy, you're going to have to let it. Like, you make a motion to have to sit until the next board meeting. Okay. That, that would be a change in the policy. Is that changing the policy? Yes, sir. 48 hours to 48 hours. You're going to change it to say excluding, if, if I understand Mr. Gant's motion, <coughs> excluding holidays and weekends, I think they said. Yes, sir. Then, <coughs> then that, I mean, that is changing the policy. Right now it's 48 hours. Which I, I think know. we need the 48 hour notice. Right. <clears throat> the real 48 hours. Right. 48 when people's working, working what you're saying when people's at work. Yes. I agree with that. Okay. And should that be something we make a motion on now and, and vote, or should we address that in a work session and get it spelled out like we should? Well. You can address it in the work session if you want to, but I don't think you can change policy yeah. at, at this meeting. So you can note that it was made and let it sit over until the next meeting where you can address it in the work session. Okay. Would, uh, Mr. Gant, would that be, would that work to address yeah. that at our, our work you session? You know, we don't always have meetings on Monday. Sometimes we have meetings on Wednesday. Yes. 
and the 48 hours is not a problem there. Yeah. But if we're meeting on Monday and notices they were saying on Friday afternoon, that's not 48 real hours. Yeah. Well, yeah, Ms. Ford, we had a discussion on 48 working hours and 48 hours. And the policy had said without without clarification, 48 hours is, can be consecutive. 48 clock 48, hours. 48. Yeah, but it, it was it was raised that they wanted to see 48 working hours, or at least two days after we needed to come in and see. So that's that's what we got to. So. Yeah, if we say 48 working hours, I have no problem mm -hmm. with that. Well, at least 48 hours going to work week, not 48 working hours. Otherwise, it's going to be. Well, yeah. five days. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. We can work on the language. You understand what you're talking about. So, <clears throat> would it be good for, for us to come up with something and then and then present that so then we can let it lay? Fine with me. Okay. So, we will. Uh, you had a motion, so Mr. Kent, will you make a motion to withdraw that motion and then push it to a... I will withdraw. Okay. Mr. Kent withdraws that motion. That is something that we definitely will take, take a look into. Okay, uh, we we have an executive session uh, with some student issues, so uh, we can we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna stay in here. So if you don't have um, if you're not a part of that, then we're gonna ask you to step out. And <coughs> okay. we will now entertain a motion to come out of executive session. I make a motion. We'll come out of executive session. No <coughs> story makes motion. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Kent seconds mm -hmm. that. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Then we are now in executive session. Um, we have um, a motion to consider a motion to approve the superintendent's recommendation uh, for student discipline for student A. Do we have a motion for student A? I'll make that motion. Is there a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Um, we call for discussion, but we can't discuss specifics out of executive session on that. Um, so we'll move to a vote. Uh, Mr. West? No. Mr. Story? Yes. Uh, Dr. Yes. Yes. Mr. Gant? Yes. And myself is a yes. So that motion carries. Uh, consider a motion to approve the superintendent's recommendation on student discipline for student B. Do we have a motion? I'll make that motion. Second. Dr. Guest seconds that motion. Again, if there's discussion outside of specifics, we'd take that now. Getting none, then we'll move to a vote. Mr. West? No. Mr. Story? Yes. Uh, Dr. Guest? Yes. Mr. Gant? Yes. And myself is a yes. And that motion carries. Under announcements, we need to look at our next board meeting and also think about a, a work session prior to that board meeting. May the third. So what about um, what about a board meeting on on May the third? That's a Thursday, and then we could do a work session before that. 
either one or session it. Could five, we do one? one and six or four and five or? Well, uh, we need, would we need a day a day before the board meeting for our work session? So it wouldn't carry. Would you rather come two different days? Would it be better? That's my, uh, doesn't matter to me. I mean. um, you got it. I'm open. You're open. Well, Mr. Story and Mr. West, y'all got preferences on a work session before? Whether it be the day of or the day before? I'd like to do it the same day. It's hard for yeah. me to get. Um, okay. So if the board meeting will be on, on the 3rd, that's a Thursday, May the 3rd. That's at five. Can we do uh, work session at three? Mm. Would that work? Mm. It take two hours for a work session. Well, I mean, I don't think if we're going to do a work session, it needs to be fifteen minutes. I mean, we mm -hmm. needs to be enough to count as it as work session. I'll give you one again. If you want to beat three, it's fine. All right. So we'll say May. You have it a different day. You want to tell your story. Yeah, if you want to have a different day, well, it don't matter. it's better than me. It don't matter. Okay. All right, May the 3rd, board meeting at 5, and work session at 3, 3.30. What do you like? 3.30 would be better than 3? 3.30 would be better. All right, let's do 3.30. Work session, 3.30. Can I make a re request about the work session? Yes, ma'am. Please do. Um, it is a work session is basically for us to discuss, and this this setting setting is really difficult to 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 have a roundtable discussion. Could we possibly meet Mr. Dukes with where uh, in a, in a, in a setting where we are sitting around a table? I know it's an open session. They can sit over there and watch us, but we we need to to be able to communicate better than me shouting down this. That, that's, we can go next door where there's tables. And then yeah, and let we need a round table for us, and then any, everybody's welcome to watch. But one of the things that also appears to have happened in our work sessions is that we <clears throat> we're getting a lot of participation from folks in the audience and, and and that's a small group having a big influence. Do we need to open up our discussion for the people in the audience in a work session? You don't have to. Then I, I'm going to recommend that our discussions be among us. Okay. Um, so that, that would be my request for, for our next work session. So we have work session at 3.30 and we'll, we'll have a, a place for that and then uh, the, the board meeting will follow that at 5 o'clock in, in this room and uh, Mr. Dukes there may be some things that you want to research on that were brought up in this meeting with Mr. Porter and maybe some notes and, and uh, if you have anything else that you want to discuss the work session get get with Mr. Dukes or myself and we'll try to get that on. And, so we're addressing everything that we need to, even though, you know, we want to discuss things that are maybe going to be on the agenda or what have you, but we also have things that we probably need to discuss our, our topics. So you get us those and we'll try to get them out and, and so that we, we're all on the same page. Any other announcements? Okay, do we have a motion to adjourn? I a motion to adjourn. Mr. Story and Mr. Gant. And then all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. 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 Aye.